He's been traded since then, not to the Lakers. And then you think maybe the no, not to the Clippers. He ain't going to L.A. He's going to the Mavericks. Jay, Uh. they're sending Dorian Finney-Smith, nice three and D player. Spencer Dinwiddie, nice player. Unprotected 2029 first round pick. Wait, Max, you mean Spencer? Dinwiddie that was originally on Yeah, and who played well for the Nets. For yeah. five years? Okay. Who Go played ahead. well for the Nets. Yep. Um, a first-round pick and two seconds in, in 2027 and 2029 for Kyrie Irving and Markeith Morris. Now, Nick Friedel, ESPN Nets reporter on game day, he's going to join us in studio at 845. Talked about why this move is better for the Nets in the long run. The drama had become too overwhelming. And as far as Brooklyn's concerned, to get away from Kyrie, to get assets in return, there's a familiarity with Dinwiddie having been here a few years back. They still hope they can win. But the reality is you can't replace Kyrie Irving. For all the drama he causes, he is an incredible player still. So as far as a title is concerned, I don't think that is a reality for this Brooklyn team anymore, but for the health of the franchise, I think they're in a better place now. There is so much to get into here, Key. Jay, there was – we could talk about the – I get from Dallas's point of view, when you have a chance to get a singular talent and you already have another one, oh, but how is it going to work? You figure that out later. Go get the blue chipper when you can get it. That's what they did. I get it from their point of view. Then there's the Nets' point of view and Kyrie's point of view. Makes sense. Makes sense of which this. One, which one? Which which uh, like, do you want to hear first? What is your headline? What's the thing you think people have to understand first? This was because <laughs> <laughs> Key, I don't know where to start. I mean, literally, the last three days. Well, okay, the here, here's of conversations what here's, I've, I've had. I've here's been, where I want you to start, Jay. Okay. Why did this happen? It was a very tumultuous relationship. Like, it was, Key, have you ever had one of those relationships or seen them with your friend where it's so sporadic and so back and forth and there's no trust at all that it's an inevitable, it wasn't going to work, but both sides <laughs> keep trying to make it work, and you're like, but this ain't going to work, y'all. Jay, Everybody else sees it, but I'm y'all the ones. My, you know what I'm Jay, talking I'm about, Key? I'm on my second marriage, yeah. Jay. <laughs> <laughs> you're fighting for Um, Look, I'm, I'm going to give you the root of it. So... And it's just from my sources. When KD goes down and he gets hurt and people around Kyrie have been trying to create conversations with management about his extension. And when an extension gets offered, a three-year extension, 140 plus million dollars, but when that third year of the extension is based off the team winning a championship for him to get his money, money can't do it. Then you have the Boston situation where they get swept by Boston. They try to reestablish conversation about the extension. Don't feel like they're getting the right just from the team, right, from Joe Sy and company. It gets extended. And then when they get this final offer with the last year of the, the third year of the deal being stipulated upon the team winning a championship, they say, no, we can't do it. And that's when you had a report that came out, hey, we're, gonna, we're not going to be together. Kyrie is going to be separated from the team. And here we have the trade. So I think it really stimulates from them not getting the contract extension. Of course. I mean, like, to sum it up, dude wanted his money. He is among the very elite of the NBA. On the other hand, he has uh, earned himself a reputation. Whether you think fair or not, they earned. He has a reputation, and I think it is deserved. To the extent to which it's deserved is another argument. But where, given his level of talent, he is not considered reliable. Is he going to be there? Will something come up? Is he going to feel like he doesn't want to play, like he's evolving into something other than a basketball player, like he doesn't want to get a shot, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and, and therefore, they want to treat him not quite like an elite but, player. But, Max, here, here's – and I, sometimes the way you say things really uh, matter. Sure. Because I said the headline, once again, I'm just not sure people heard me. You give me a contract in NBA history where a year of your pay has been stipulated upon your team winning a championship. I, it's the first it's I've heard of it. It's unprecedented. You've never heard of it before in the history of basketball. 
It's a complete slap in the face. If you want to stipulate my contract based upon games played, okay. Like, that's even that's a separate conversation, right? Because if KD's not playing, if Ben Simmons isn't here playing the way we thought he was going to play and I have to play 40 minutes a night, it increases my probability of injury while I'm carrying the team. So that, that's a separate conversation, but that's – more respectable, okay. Yeah, you guys could make games, okay. It's you know, not, I can you guys that, couldn't kid. make you had Harden no. here. You now you don't have Harden here. You guys couldn't make the whole thing work, and now I'm gonna lose money because if we don't win a champ, I get it. Yep. Yeah, yeah it, it's not respectable at all, Jay. The fact that you want to stipulate and put some clause in my contract, whether it was the first year or the third year, if we go down because I, let's say I play the entire season and Ben Simmons doesn't play or. KD gets hurt again in the playoffs or whatever the case may be, or, or, you know, he requests a trade or something along those lines come up, that third year to me is a waste of year. There you go, Keith. There, and there, guess what else, Keith? No, there, why do I have to put my future in their hands or my economics? And guess I mean, what, what, what if we have to fire another coach? It makes you the most tradable asset there is. I could send you anywhere. What do you, you think? Any team wouldn't take that? Oh my goodness! If I, 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 yeah, I'll take Kyrie Irving if the last year in the contract it says right here in the contract it's stipulated upon you win a championship or you don't get paid. I mean, it basically, given how many teams there are and everything, you know, only one team can win. It's almost like an NFL contract when you see. It's almost like when you see. Oh, you got 150 million. How much is guaranteed? 80 million. So why are we reporting it as a buck fifty when it's really eighty, right? You can you could just take sounds that, better, man. Yeah, you could just take that extra money to win it just off the contract because the guaranteed money is not there, oh, and so it's unlikely that any team wins a championship in any given season. You got so much more to say. There's a lot going on, including why isn't Kyrie headed for the Lakers? So yeah. the Mavs didn't get an extension done. Kyrie could be a free agent at the end of this season. Why would the Mavs do this without locking him up? Because essentially, as 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 Max said, the Lakers didn't get this deal done. The Mavs kind of got it done. But the Lakers can do it once Westbrook comes off the books next spring. I mean, next uh, offseason. That's where he wants to go. Well, Because I think Mark Cuban is in a situation with Luka where you're trying to find any way to keep Luka there and happy and give him a chance to win a championship, even if it's in a one-year window. I mean, they made the move for Christian Wood. Christian Wood has not been the guy they thought he was going to be. So now you – Tell me that for the last half of the season, you have Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. With no will, defense. Will be, well, they're already, yeah, they're ranked like 25th in defense. They're not going to play defense anyway. But you tell me a backcourt better than Luka and Kyrie Irving. You know, it really puts pressure on Luka to me, Jay, because I, I when Harden was on the nets and KD got hurt and it was just him and Kyrie and Kyrie said here you're the point guard and Kyrie played off the ball they were killing the game just the two of them mm -hmm. Harden let his point total drop he's a game is a lot like Lucas let his point total drop 20 22 points a game ton of assists Kyrie was going nuts. They were killing teams in the Western Conference without KD. They were on a road trip. I remember they didn't play a lot together, but now it's on Luka. Can he do the same thing? Yeah, I mean, so Luka to me has always been a poor man's LeBron James, right? Like he is not as athletic as LeBron James, but more skilled at this stage of his game than LeBron James was. So you're telling me if he's a com combination of scoring ability like James Harden, but has the passing ability and leadership aspects to a degree of like LeBron James, not saying leadership, because yeah, yeah. I think LeBron's a way better leader and Luka's still learning how to lead. But we've already seen this script before with Kyrie and LeBron. Yeah. So it's the same exact thing. Kyrie plays off the ball. They're one of the top teams in the league in isolations per game. They double-team Luka down the stretch. You can't double-team Luka now when Kyrie's on the floor. It works out perfectly for the Mavs. And this is a year window where you go and you win a chip. You got and it. you tell me you a better it. year Jay, to win the West than this year, which is wide open. You got to try it, You got to try it if you're down. Yeah, I mean, I guess. But, Jay, they, first of all, Jay mentioned the defenses at the bottom half of the league. Yep. In terms of where they're at defensively, you have to stop somebody. You still got to see guys like Ja. You still got to see guys at, at, at L.A. at the Clippers. I mean, there's teams that you got to see with players Denver, that yep. can score points. Denver, so on, so on. Yep, but I was going to ask you, though, Jay, if you remember going back to when Philadelphia put in Philadelphia, when the Nets put all this together with Harden and, 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 and Kyrie and just put everything together, they hadn't played together. And it took them a while at times to get going. Now, I want to ask you, though, how can Kyrie 
and Luca just hit the ground running when they've never played together. Like they don't, they haven't played together, so they don't know each other. This is different than maybe a, a LeBron James pickup ball or maybe a, a, a KD pickup ball. Him and Luca has never played together. Yeah, but Key, you got one of the all-time best point guards to ever play the game coaching this team. You got Jason Kidd coaching this team. So with it, two it, of the most skillful with, dudes oh, you can possibly ask for. I mean, so it's like just add that to the Holy Trinity. You know what I mean? Name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Like that is Jason <laughs> Kidd, Kyrie Irving, and Luka Doncic. When you do the sign of the cross, I mean, that's that's what that guard combination is. I don't think they're going to the have guard a hard time. combination. I don't think I don't think they're having a hard time at all because this this same style in basketball in which Kyrie was playing now. James Harden was a guard, like ball dominant guard. But you ever it's see, the same style. you ever see like in the old days when AI and Vince Carter would be on the All Star team, they just picked up and started looked like they well, played together. It was an All Star team, though. I'm yeah, just talking about continuity, is, though. Certain, of course, Key, but you're right about that, of course. But at a certain level of skill, which these guys are operating on, they should be able to figure this out before it would take another pair to figure it out, right? They should be. They, I mean, we would. These dudes can't. I, do. I personally would think that, but. Jay played in the NBA, and, and so he would know more so than me if they could just pick up, hit the ground running because they haven't been there. It just seems hard to me that they would be able to do that. They're going to lose a lot of time, you know, before the playoffs trying to put the continuity together. They ain't going to stop anyone, that's for sure, but they should be able to score, right? I mean, look, if you, as a, as a hooper, though, Key, like if there's a certain skill set that I have as a scorer, a playmaker, right, and a dynamic handler, like that, th those aren't hard aspects to combine to a team, right? Because Kyrie's already used to playing off the ball. He showed you he could play off the ball with James Harden. They're a high isolation team. Kyrie's great in isolation, and Kyrie's also played before with a guy in LeBron James who got double teamed down the stretch, hence him making one of the biggest shots in Cleveland basketball history for them to win the world championship. So it, the, 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 the foundation of it isn't going to be hard. Their communication will this be a is challenge, a, but it's well, not, I mean, I guess that, not going to be hard. I, yeah, I guess it's true because I, I hit the ground running on our two-on-two. -two. With you, there I just, you go. You know, we didn't we play one, button, one, one possession. <laughs> this, yeah, is made it work. this is going to be on Luca in the sense that, okay, Luca, like a lot of players at your level, you never really had a dude on your level on the team, right? They Porzingis, but not exactly. Now, no, here's Porzingis dude, no, wasn't on his no, level. No, right, of course. No. But I'm saying they went and got a, an all-star caliber, sort of. Sort kind of. of. He's hurt a lot. Now they went and got him, like, real recognized, real game recognized game. They went and got him one of those guys to put with him. People are not going to remember what problems or style or you didn't hit the ground or whatever. They're going to remember you had that dude. What are you going to do with him? Pressure's on Luka now. Pressure is on him now. What are you going to do? Got to win a chip, man. Got to win a chip. chip I year. mean, if they chip, even if they win a couple it, it, but playoff he, series, he, if they chip up, they chip up that's incredible. So, I mean, now, right now, if you're Mark Cuban. Yeah. But if, they try to chip Luka, up year one. To, for yeah. sure. You have to do everything in your power to allow Jason Kidd to coach this team to get them to the highest peak performance as possible because you're trying to lure Kyrie Irving to sign a long-term deal with your organization and Luka Doncic. It's one, of the, it's one of the biggest bets in NBA basketball history, and there's nobody better to take this bet than Mark Cuban, who's built become a billionaire off taking bets Chris, like yeah. this, guys. You got to. If you're a market, you have to. For whatever reason, Dallas is has not been a magnet type market, right? So if you're in a market like that and you have a player like Luca, even if the if the fit isn't perfect, right? When you have a blue chipper like Kyrie become available, you must roll the dice, or you're just going to be in limbo forever on the treadmill, never really making progress. Tim McMahon, ESPN Mavericks reporter on primetime. Listen to this. I mean, listen, you don't make this deal thinking that you've got a, a, a guy who's going to be, you know, blending in with the Boy Scouts. Like, you understand the risk that comes along with Kyrie. The Mavericks essentially made the decision that the skill justifies the risk, and, then, and that's what this is. Now, it's kind of a trial period for both sides, right? But I think more so, if we're being frank, for, for Kyrie Irving. He's the one who has – the leverage who kind of has all, all the cards to play, they're not going to talk extension because he wants a four-year deal. Jay, <clears throat> it, it, as you would like to say, it chaps your you-know-what. But when I, <laughs> when I hear people say, you know, you're not getting a guy in the Boy Scouts and all this sort of stuff, I'm, just, I'm always trying to understand what they mean by this because I'm not 
afraid to do a deal with Kyrie because I understand what he is. I understand his thought process, his mental capacity of what he believes in and what he doesn't believe in. All I really care about is the basketball side of things because everybody in the world have their own beliefs. They have their own beliefs about what it is, whether it was the vaccination situation, whether it was watching uh, people of color go through certain things in their lives and you want to kind of give them a, a shoulder to lean on and support situations. And you always go back to it's always something with him. Damn. And that always something with him drives me nuts. Yes, he's missed time because he believes in what he believes in. It's not like he's out there He's missing time because he's in domestic violence situations or he's missing time because he's in and out of rehab for drug issues or he's missing time because in he other just words, the use of the word Boy Scout places a negative spin on his on his character as though he's doing stuff wrong as opposed to reasons why he missed time that you might not love from a professional point of view, but it doesn't make him a bad guy. Yeah, I, and so, Jay, explain to me why in basketball circles is that? Well, I, I don't think that is in basketball circles. Well, when I say basketball circles, I meant around the, 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 the media, so to speak, not necessarily people on the court wearing the uniforms. Well, I mean, I, I think for the, last, for the last couple of years, Keith, think about what you just made mention. Mm -hmm. So you talked about George Floyd. A, a, a series of events that occurred in our country where a lot of people tried to stand up for what they believed was right. And, you know, that was an unprecedented situation. Think about the pandemic, another unprecedented situation. And then think about, you know, what happened with reposting. Um, by the way, Amazon still has it up and Amazon is ran by somebody that is Jewish. So it's, they're selling it. Yeah. They're selling it. So, you know, they didn't find it to be anti-Semitic. So, uh, and how much? No, that they, they, it's not. That's not an issue. They say whether or not it's anti-Semitic, they're going to sell it. Right. So, I mean, they didn't find that to be. That's something that's it's still going to this day. So, I, I feel like it is these themes that all of a sudden come back. And and I think one of the things that you constantly hear um, from my sources is that, like, you know, why does it feel like the Nets are always negotiating through the media? Right? So when these things happen, it's, you know, Nick Ferdell has a story. Woj has a story. Ramona Shelba has a story. Like, it's people are wondering, like, where do these stories come from, where these leaks come from, where things aren't being handled internally? So when people hear that, it gives the kind of reaction key is, well, now I can't trust anybody. Like, there's no trust there. So, I, you know, when you ask me to come to the table and be honest and, and be thorough, you try, but then things leak, you know, and granted, look, I'm, I'm not absolving anybody. Like I said at the beginning of this whole conversation, Key, yeah. I think this was a bad marriage to begin with, with the way yeah. things kicked off between Joe Sy and Kyrie Irving, and I didn't see it working. But I think there's a lot of non-trust, and I think that is now the narrative that follows Kyrie, that it's is. like, well, it's risky. Okay. He's risky so, now, when that's really so, not the case. So my other side to this, and you, you mentioned it, yeah, right, leaks information from for whatever reason is coming out of the building in Brooklyn to whoever for close relationships and we talked about it I want to ask you when we came out we went, before we went to break I want to ask you about the Kevin Durant situation but I, I know we talked about Kyrie I wanted to get that in early before I move on to KD mm -hmm. you talked about KD doing it quietly not being loud about being traded if in fact he wanted to come summertime and I feel I feel like Last night, before I went to bed, I thought if he moves again, he's gonna they're gonna bury his ass. But I listened to you this morning. I'm like, well, I guess if he did it quietly and just was like, okay, I'm gonna play, but then I, in the summertime, I need to go to them and say, man, this ain't you know. Let's just figure it out. Send me to Miami. Send me to LA. Send me to Oakland. I don't care. I just want to get out. But even with that being said, now that you said leaks. They could turn it on him and say he wanted out, even though he did it quietly. So he is still going to get framed as the bad guy. Framed as the bad guy, so to speak, Jay. But, but Key, I, I don't think Kevin Durant gives a damn about how people frame him. Like, he'll, I, I he'll know, fight people I know on that. social yeah. media about it. 
But, like, this goes back to the bigger conversation that me, you, and Max are talking about offline here. Right? Like, one of the reasons why y'all got a chip, y'all being the Lakers key, is because there were influences with LeBron's camp that ultimately joined forces with the Lakers to help get things done. Now, when that ran its course, people got really angry because now all of a sudden LeBron James has too much power and the franchise is listening to him too much. Even though it gave you all a chip, it got you all a championship, it's too much power. Take away power. When your eyeballs are on Kyrie, that's a transcendent talent. And, and, and you know, it cuts through. Before you say something, I'm all about players getting their money. And I get the history that has led Kyrie ultimately to that point where it's like, hey, that's the final slap in the face as it relates to a contract extension. The only thing, Key, mm-hmm. that, like, like, you and I, Key, like, brothers, right? Like, on this show. Like, we ride or die. So, at the end of the day, it's like, man, I, the fact that Kyrie was like, you know what? This is not working in the middle of the season. I get like, That's the only thing that kind of, like, for Kevin Durant and that well, relationship – is the only thing that makes it hard. But Jay, if you had to get your Jay, money, but think and, about and it for though. some reason you had to you had to bounce in the middle of something, but it was to get your money, well, you everyone understands. But you would have gotten your money anyway at the end of the season, right? Yeah, but I, but I ain't, but I ain't, but no, You're over dealing it, with it, so. I love you, I, I hear you. I know Trade you got to make a choice. Coming up, I know you got to make a choice. I hear you. Y'all hear giving you. me a three-year deal, but it's really a two-year bamboozle me. If I don't make it to the championship my first and second year, that third year is basically voided out. I don't get my money. That's the first thing I said, Key. What if, Key, I was like, I'm just not signing anything, but finish the year out, I'm gone. Yeah, but I can't. It, it, you get that money right now. Well, I guess. I'm, why why would I help? But see, anyway. but Jay, why would I help, help you? you. Well, that, that's where. And when but, but, I mean but, not you, right. I'm talking about the organization. I hear what you. the hell would I help so that, you that, for and you don't want to pay me? That's the hard part about it because now you're separating. I don't want to help the organization, but this is my boy. Like, how yeah, do I, I not help my you boy, You my dude, too. but a buck fifty, I can't. Me and you, we're going to see each other later on. Man. I we good. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.